This is a HeadGum Podcast. She's a rich girl. She don't try to hide it. No diamonds on the soles of her shoes. He's a poor boy, empty as a pocket, empty as a pocket with nothing to lose. Sing to na na, to na na. She's got diamonds on the soles of her shoes. To na na, to na na. She's got diamonds on the soles of her shoes. Oh my God, that was my stunning rendition of Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes by Paul Simon, the goat, one might say. All right, what year are we in? We're back in 2009. This podcast cannot escape the year 2009. Maybe I need to stop being friends with people in my age group. I think I need to start aging up or aging down. Kidding, not aging down. Don't worry, I'm only aging up. 50 plus only. (laughs) <laughs> now, I know that you're, what you're going to say, Greta, we've been in 2009 before. What could you possibly tell me is happening in pop culture that I don't already know? And I'm going to list you the top 10 gadgets from 2009. The Motorola Droid. The Nook. The Dyson Air Multiplier. The iPhone 3GS. The Canon EOS 1D Mark Four, you know I fucked around with that. The Del Adamo XPS, no idea what that is. Fine Picks Real 3DW1, I don't know what that is either. And the Casio G-Shock, an iconic watch. Now was that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the funny thing is that was only eight. And I was guaranteed 10, and now I'm going to tell you the the 10. Oh, but this is on a whole thing in time, and you know what? I'm not. Wow, did you know Time Magazine lists 10 top apologies from 2009? Ooh, can we hear some? <laughs> just, just two, since we only got eight. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you two apologies. Serena Williams said, my fault. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and... um. Someone keep doing what, Ernie? I don't know what these are. I don't know. They're (laughs) like no context. Time is like paraphrasing these things that happened in 2009. Top 10 apologies. Keep doing what, Ernie? Local New York television anchor Ernie Anastasios became the story himself during a September news broadcast after the veteran journalist offered an odd instruction to the station's weatherman during some on-air banter. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's it for 2009. And where are we when all of our tech is being used? Where are we when we are gazing into the lens of that Canon 5D Mark IV or wearing the Casio G-Shock? We are in Seal Beach. Mm-hmm. And where mm-hmm. is Seal Beach in Orange County, for those wondering? And who are we? We are Sarah Ramos. Wow. I love that we are all together. I am thrilled to have you on my show. Me too. That was so uh, impressive. What was? The way that you just synthesized so much information so quickly. Honey, I'm a... I am <laughs> and a, turned it into a song as well. I'm a high-speed computer. I'm really impressed. This body is meant to intake and throw it out. I don't keep it in. I just go... Wow. Yeah, like a printer. It was gorgeous. Also, your voice. <gasps> Thank you. You know, it's a little operatic. The Met, call me. Um, <laughs> let's get into it. I have to know. You know, I love talking to, first of all, fan, you know, fan, a fan talking fan, to fan, fans, fans talking to fans. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I love talking to a child actor. Okay. It's a passion. A, a former child actor, tragically. No I longer mean, a child. Aren't we all children at heart? Yes, you're you right. Know, in when that you sense. think about it, yeah. the joie de vie, kind of the kid inside. That's what I try to, to bring to my world every day. And I think you do. Thank you. I think you do. Have you talked to other child actors? I have. Okay. Hit me. I have spoken to Jared Goldstein, who was a Broadway child actor of all things. Yes. No idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Successful. Very successful. I never heard of him. I mean, I know him now. <gasps> yeah, but not but, as a child actor. Well, you know, he was more, some might say, he's more of a theater child actor. You're sure. more of the television Hollywood Hollywood yeah. mm-hmm. child actor and I just get so interested in knowing what your high school experience was like so I please just like paint the picture up top what was going on with you in high school who were you were mm-hmm. you going to school regularly what was your style were you in a clique what was your high school like just kind of tell me everything okay 
Um, I, you know, as you know, I was a little hesitant to come on this podcast once I heard it was about high school because high school was a bit of a dark time for me. I, I may have been a bit of a talented Mr. Ripley esque character. Mm. Um, I was a an extreme conformist. I started out in high school extremely conformist, mm-hmm. trying to fit in um, to the popular kids' clique. Um, and I ended high school probably um, not leaving my room, like mm. hardly ever didn't go to prom. Um, I didn't go to prom either. What did you do instead? I went to a party. At another, like another school's right. party. Yes, I went to another school's yeah. prom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, and in between that, I was I did a a television show mm-hmm. on the CW. Mm-hmm. The first year of the CW it was a horribly failed show called Runaway, starring Donnie Wahlberg. Fun it was on the run. Yes, and who did you play? I played his daughter, of course. Mm, but of course, um, but of course, um, it was canceled after like two episodes aired. Um, that but it sucks. Took me. It was fine. <laughs> I don't know. It took me to to Canada for part of school, and high school is just a tumultuous time. Oh, I you're preaching to the choir. By the way, very rare do I have someone come on this show and is like, I loved high school. It was mm-hmm. an amazing time for me. <laughs> like, most people that I speak to are like, high school was hell. I think that if you had an amazing time in high school, you have something – wrong right with you because it's a time where we're all just trying to figure out like who are we what are we doing and like scavenging for identity and purpose at all costs at all costs what was your high school like because my other friends that grew up in like orange county laguna beach that kind of chunk of southern california It's very beachy. It's very, like, surfer bros and bonfires on the beach. Very, like, Orange County, the Mm -hmm. television show vibes. So, absolutely, surfer bros, skater bros, bonfires, hanging out in the beach parking lot. Um, But uh, Seal Beach should not be confused with Laguna Mm. or Newport. Mm. It's not the same level of... um, brand name Orange County. Mm. It's kind of like a quirky small town with a main street. More like artsy, less like No. <laughs> or le- le- less Republican perhaps? No. 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 You're still in that little it's... red coastal strip, you know. Definitely in that. Um it's hard to describe it just feels a little bit like you've got name brand Orange County, mm-hmm. Newport, and then you've got like generic brand like mm. Seal Beach where people are like, what is that? Sure, sure, yeah. And they've never heard of it. Yeah, I get that. It's like Advil is Laguna, your ibuprofen. Exactly. Great. Exactly. We have like um, the Los Alamitos racetrack. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Isn't that where they race dogs? Horses, I horses. <laughs> Do they race? Me dogs? ask me acting like absolutely love that track. The dog racing. Yeah, track. they race dogs, greyhounds. Oh, really? Yeah, those things run fast. Maybe they do do that. There. You never know. I wouldn't go. Did you spend time there in high school? No. God, no. We would frequent the um, a shopping center that we called the Target Center mm. because there was a Target love. in it um, as well, and a. Across the parking lot, there was a um, a Jamba Juice. Fabulous. And uh, I believe it was a Baja Fresh, but it might have been a Rubio's. I love Rubio's. <laughs> do you? Where I are actually you do from? love Rubio's. I grew up in Washington, D.C. Okay. But then when I would like, come out here and visit my cousins in L.A., mm, I loved Rubio's. Yeah. And then when I did my freshman year of college at the University of Arizona, there was a mm. Rubio's. And oh, I wow. Would, Fuck up Rubio's there. And obviously we have Baja Fresh in D.C. Oh. You know, kind of Southern California style version of like Cadoba or Chipotle. Mm-hmm. And I, I fucked around with Baja. It wasn't my number one. Mm-hmm. I was more of a Chipotle girl myself. 
Was Chipotle, I'm sorry, around in 2009? Yes, we had like- I feel like no, if and you're for, saying yes. For uh, for me, in my, in my life, right. um, Chipotle was very much around. It wasn't a juggernaut. <laughs> no, yet. not a juggernaut. It had just come from, I think, Denver. I think Chipotle is from Denver. Wow. And um, I, pers- me personally, I consumed Chipotle probably every single day my like sophomore year of high school because me and my best friend Kenzie, we'd go and get stoned and then we'd order the most disgusting burrito that you've ever seen in your life. It was truly the size of like a newborn baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'd eat the whole thing. Of course. And it was unbelievable. I felt, oh, yeah. I was crazy. slamming bean and cheese burritos. I We love to slam a bean and cheese. <laughs> we had <laughs> a spot right across the street from the beach called mm. El Burrito Junior. I would, yeah. See, the thing, the issue with high school is like I go to my memories mm-hmm. and I go straight to middle school. Mm. And I'm like, wait, no, like what was happening in high school? I think I was going through some heavy like traumatic um, processing dissociation sure. that I haven't maybe uncovered all the memories. No, I mean, I I literally don't remember half of my um, sophomore year and I don't remember chunks. <laughs> it's very patchy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, what I think about, the reason why I always ask my guests, like what were you wearing? What were you listening to? Like what was your style? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it helps us jog those kind of Mm-hmm. sense memories back it absolutely does what was the style what was i wearing what was this i mean the style was obviously like layered tank tops cnc california's sparkle C- oh here's the thing from urban Outfitters. yeah here's the thing cnc california i was aghast at the price tag of that oh yeah it was horrific how could i in my high school days how could i even i think they were like 69.99 like a tank i was like expensive tank tops yeah are disgusting yeah so then where'd you go urban and you get the sparkle oh i definitely went to urban yeah but i also in to, maybe it was different on the east coast because i know urban started in philly mm-hmm. urban was not popular here where'd you go i would go but you have to understand there were but a few urban outfitters there was one on melrose mm-hmm. which is still there which i would frequent um, when I would come up for an audition, I would mm. just pop in, get a graphic tee with a pug on it. Why not? Because um, <laughs> I had a pug. I remember that I had a shirt, an urban shirt. Again, I feel like that's high s- or middle school, but I, I think know. I wore it in. I wore it into high school. Um, and there was another Urban Outfitters in Costa Mesa, mm. um, but it was like a trek to go to an urban. Yeah. We were we had Wet Seal. I love Wet Seal. Wet Seal, Pac Sun, slutty. Was it Wet Seal? I was not slutty. Also, Wet Seal was slutty. Wet Seal was <laughs> slinky like club looks. I it's feel. true. It's true. There was I only wore. I went to a premiere when I was in early middle school and wore a Wet Seal red and white striped halter top. Love that incredibly age appropriate i mean when you're in middle school hitting a premiere you got to pull out the look absolutely i do i'm so curious so like you're in high school are you is being an actor like a professional working actor was that commonplace were you in high school with other actors my school had famously um educated the minds of child actors such as the guy who played Ethan on Lizzie McGuire. Love. So that was big. I think he was on the water polo team or sure. something. Um, I remember thinking he was hot. Absolutely. Yeah. He was like our claim to fame. He was the crush. Yeah, I know. Um, so we had him. We had this kid, Miles Jeffrey, who was in Face Off. Oh, I love that movie. And I bo- I've never seen it. And I believe he did a, he did a MTV... I'm a genius episode or something. Okay. I don't know. Sounds like a star. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, where um but that's really and then like me and I feel like that's kind of the limit um of our school in that era. But we did have we are near um Disneyland. Mm-hmm. So we've got, you know, some kids just hopping off the bus after school to go to their after school jobs being a Disney princess. Wow, really? So that's kind of even more chic. Well, that's crazy. I didn't even know that high schoolers could be Disney princesses. Yes, there was. I did dance um, one year as an elective mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, in um, 
high school and there was a gorgeous dancer who was a senior and she like played Cinderella at Disneyland. Oh my God. After school, yeah. So when you were at high school, were you like, I want to be here or were you like, fuck this place. Like I'm a professional working woman and like, I don't really need this and mm-hmm. I kind of just want to move on. What What were your feelings? You know, I, I having never seen the show, I think it was kind of like a Hannah Montana type situation. Mm, like a double life. Double life um, in that no one at my high school really gave a shit about my acting career mm. or exploits on sets. Mm-hmm. Um, I was pop culture obsessed. Most people um, in Seal Beach were not. They didn't really care. Mm. And that was tough. You know, it wasn't a power card to play. It was really like something that made you different Mm -hmm. and weird and more just like, oh, you missed like this. Mm -hmm. You missed something that happened on this day. Not like, oh, because you were taking fan photos with Kelly Clarkson or whatever. Right. Um, They did not care about that but I I just felt so um I like worshipped <laughs> st- status mm-hmm. so we're in a very toxic way mm-hmm. so wherever I went I just wanted to be high status so like in acting I was like how do I do this mm-hmm. was not very successful and at school was like okay how do I like become popular? popular yes I think I took like all the wrong messages from like the teen movies mm. that we were raised on like she's all that mm-hmm. um i was like taylor vaughn the popular girl who is, is so hot, hot and cool yeah she's incredible <laughs> sorry the bully's hot and cool <laughs> that was the takeaway i was like well i want to be like them yes i want to yeah. go on spring break fuck matthew lillard <laughs> and get his face tattooed on my shoulder or whatever wow. i know what did incredible she get tattooed? memory i what don't did she remember get tattooed that. on her i don't it was on you. her shoulder, and she was like, ow, and, like, Freddie yeah, yeah, Prince yeah. wants to talk to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Gorgeous you know, strapless. that movie informed a lot for me. I am mm-hmm. I am someone that was also very pop culture obsessed, but in my, high, in my high school, I think it felt maybe, or just, like, in my friend group, maybe it felt more commonplace, because, mm-hmm. like, I was constantly, like, we were talking about music before we started recording, and I was... It was very normal in my friend group to, like, listen to classic rock or, like, alternative music and not listen to, like, Top 40. And Mm, it was very mm -hmm. commonplace to be really into, like, independent films and, like, watching weird television shows and, like, being obsessed with, like, David Lynch and, Mm, like, all mm -hmm. this stuff we would think would make us interesting. Yeah, we were not, like... Again, it was, like, surfers and skaters. Right. Like, they were, like, outside doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, just not an outdoor kid. Mm -hmm. And so I think I look back to middle school where I was, like, in my element. I was truly pop culture obsessed Mm -hmm. and celebrating it and living it up. Mm -hmm. I was on American Dreams, Mm -hmm. a television show you know, which was also about pop culture. Yep. So fully immersed in this meta universe where I would go to Hollywood events and stuff. And then that show ended at the same time as middle school did. And I went into high school like, I'm going to be a new person. Mm. But also then kind of in a free fall of like, well, who am I without the pop culture? And I couldn't just be like, I like it a little. I was like, I hate it. Right. And I only listen to serious music Mm -hmm. and watch serious things. What were um, the serious things that you watched? Well, I tried to. Like, sounds like you were really – the thing is it wasn't true to who I was. Like, sure. I was like – I was like, okay, I'm watching Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless mm-hmm. Mind. I'm watching um, Blue Velvet. I'm watching the David Lynch movies. Yeah. I'm reading Atlas Shrugged. Sure. <laughs> and I'm not enjoying a goddamn uh, yeah. minute of it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. For me, it was like, I'm going to decode and fully understand <laughs> Donnie Darko frame by frame. Yeah. Like, obsessed. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. I'm going to dig deep into this Elliot Smith record <laughs> and find out exactly what he's feeling. No, it's like, it, yeah. But I think that when you are an uh, emotionally, like, stunted, speaking, <laughs> not even stunted, but when you're like, I don't know, I think that all of us that are like dramatic or like mm-hmm. wanting this, like, to be drawn to pursue acting at a really young age, I think it's 
a pursuit of fantasy that like mm-hmm. beautiful we're just born fun. with you know mm-hmm. and I think that Dreams like, meeting reality. Yeah, or just like trying to sink your teeth into something that'll make you feel like you're deepening yourself, but in reality, you're actually just like not enjoying any of it. Mm-hmm. Like I also, um, you know, I won't, I won't dance around it. Um, I was a virgin um, and was not ass. ready to sexual get sexual at all, and um, that was also part of the coming of age, like really shocking. Uh, aspect that I went through having been a child actor it was like I played the bratty little sister and I spent like five minutes in hair and makeup and then auditioning while I was in high school like the parts changed Mm -hmm. and it was all like hot like sexy which is weird because they were teenagers Mm -hmm. and I like there started being an emphasis on what how I looked that like my mom and casting directors would be like Put on makeup, bitch. <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. but I like, didn't listen, know what you to fucking do. Dumb slut. People, I did like audition it. for Desperate Housewives, and um, they said like she needs to put more emphasis in her appearance. Like this is Desperate Housewives. We like pretty people, which was shock, shocker, shocking. That is so. Fun that was up. brutal, and I've written about this. A bit. It also happened at the same time as like intense family issues came up, like deaths in the family Mm. that we never paused to deal with. Mm. So it was just like, okay, cool, like grieve that and then put on makeup and like go to the audition. Mm. And also like at school, like the guy that you like wants somebody who's going to suck his dick. (laughs) Yeah, not like a prude. Yeah. Damn, I wish I were prude in high school. Uh, it's actually a regret. No. Yeah, no. Oh my god, let's switch lives. It, it is a regret. Why? Because it's uh, let me I, I've said this before on this podcast. High school sex is bad. <laughs> okay? Like you're not missing out on anything. If anything, you're missing out on just like trauma. Oh. And it's just not good. It's like Guys fucking coming so fast, <laughs> having no idea what they're doing, and then mm-hmm. you also being there. Also not knowing what you're doing and, like, also not having the language to, like, I wasn't, like, you know, I, there would be girls that would be, like, yeah, you just got to train your boyfriend how to eat you out. It's, like, bitch, I don't know how, <laughs> like, what that is, you know? It's, like. People would be saying that? Yes. Like, I don't wow. know how to, like, instru- I'm fucking 17. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, like, and also, you're still in an age where, like. You are scared of your vagina. <laughs> Where like, you know, I wasn't I am I am still like n- like yes, like I love my body and like I <laughs> love my vagina, but there are times when like I don't know. Everyone's like so in touch now. You know what I mean? Everyone's well, so Well, yes, like, I wish I grew up. I wish I was Gen Z. There was such a pressure yeah. that it was like you're either gay or you're a hot slut. Sure. A hot straight slut. Sure. Which is it? And I was like, not either. And it was like, they were confused. And they were like, why? Just like, why? What's going on? Like, that's what I felt all the time. I was like, why? Well, I think like our point in high school was really to like, the only way that they can metabolize identity was by putting you in a box. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, I think that when we look at like Gen Z Mm -hmm. and the reason why we're like, oh, like, that looks so nice is because it feels like they have such a larger breadth of like self-expression that's accepted Mm -hmm. than maybe when we were in high school. Well, I like that they're like the gender binary, the Kinsey scale of sexuality. Like it's all in flux. It's all a conversation. And if you're trying to put me in a box, then you're actually square. Right. Like I like how it turns it around Mm -hmm. like that. I could have totally used that. Yeah. Being like, I'm just weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's cool. So were you, was your mom like a stage like how did you get into I was your mom like a like a stage mom? Is that what it's called? Yes, is that what it's called? Um yes, it is called a stage mom. She I mean in the technical sense of the term absolutely. I I don't I think there are connotations to it that she would object to, but um Oh, I don't mean it in the sense of, like dance mom, stage mom. I mean like supportive. Like she was like taking you to the auditions and was like, "Yes, this is what you want to do. Let's do it." Yes, very supportive. Like 
both of my parents, when I talk to them since, when I'm like trying to unpack, like, where did this come from? Why did I do this? They're very much like, you just wanted to. So we let you. Yeah. We supported you, perhaps to a fault. Did you regret that in high school? Hmm. I didn't. <laughs> I'm just thinking of a college admissions essay that I wrote. I didn't. What was it? I, I, I will. I will tell you. Um, I. I didn't regret it. I definitely was, like, tortured by, like, I wasn't getting jobs. Um, mm. Like, right out the bat in high school, I auditioned for Gossip Girl, mm. which uh, – the original series, which I'd read all the books um, mm-hmm. and was simply obsessed. And what did you audition for? For Jenny Humphrey. Uh, and I think they cast the absolute perfect girl. But I got really close. Um, it was, like, I was the runner-up for this. And I was, like – obsessed at this point and this happened at exactly the same time that my family members my family members passed away Mm. like and we didn't deal with any of it and it was just all so much and I put it all on Gossip Girl Mm. I was like well it was just because I didn't get cast in Gossip Girl like Mm. and that's my trauma as an actress and like I can't even watch my friends watching Gossip Girl yeah I mean Taylor Momsen really came in I mean, it must be said she's an absolute star. I mean, Taylor Momsen was a great was great in that part. She was great. But you would have been great too. It just would have been so different. It would have been very different. I also don't think I was I think it was a good thing I wasn't cast in it because like I remember seeing the um New York Magazine cover, which is gives you a sense of like where I'm at in high school where I remember a New York Magazine cover, mm-hmm. like why am I even consuming New York Magazine? I don't know. I <laughs> I like I feel you in high school. You I are? think we wow. probably would have been friends. Like you were not in Orange County. No, no. But like I remember seeing. I mean, I remember that very famous Vanity Fair cover. Oh, with, it's like, totally raining teens. Yes, with like all of them. Me too. Me too. And I remember being mad that like I was not on that cover. Wow. And I remember mm-hmm. always feeling like <laughs> I was meant to have the Amanda show. Wow, and, I could see that. And I begged my mother to take me to New York to get me an agent, and she refused. So, like, Smart. I wanted desperately – the reason why I love talking to I people know, that were, like, okay. child actors is because in my head, I was like, well, I was a child actor, too. No one got to see how good I was. <laughs> and, yes. like, I never got to audition for the part of Lizzie McGuire, but I would have been really good, you know? Oh, my God. The reality would have been, like – you doing teen improv, which I also did at the teen improv. Oh, is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I just call it. Teen it was improv. called Teen Troop. I mean, it's bleak. The did you have? Is bleak. Did you have? So you wait. You were. Let me go back to high school really quickly. Even though I could, we could fully spend this whole podcast talking about your career um, between the ages of oh, fourteen and eight. God, yeah. Were so when you were on your pursuit for extreme popularity and status Mm -hmm. and you were like molding (laughs) this Mm -hmm. kind of character Mm -hmm. that was informed by cinema let's say Mm -hmm. what did you have success like did you end up ruling the school and also two-parter did you feel that your you know virgin nature wasn't helping your case or helped your case because I feel like a lot of the cool girls in movies were like having sex yeah it did not help my case really yeah so it was kind of the double whammy of like it wasn't helping me at work and it wasn't helping me at school um so fucked up it was like coming onto the scene in freshman year it was like fresh meat wow like Mm. it was working for me Mm -hmm. like it, it was it was Working for me, but I quickly became obsessed with a sophomore who I be stayed obsessed with for the rest of high school, mm. <laughs> and we never dated. Classic, unrequited classic. Love. So <laughs> unrequited, all in my head. Um, and I had some flirtations with some cute older boys, but like, I wasn't looking to hook up. Mm. You know, you were looking for an emotional connection, something deep. Yeah. And um, I didn't know how to communicate and like to play with um, rejecting people 
repeatedly mm. and giving almost nothing. Mm. Like I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan mm-hmm. and part of that is because she has lyrics like um you should take it as a compliment that I'm talking to everyone here but you. Mm. That's the level that I was at. Love that. In high school. Power. And they the boys were not picking up on that. Mm, they were just viewing it as rejection. It was going over their heads. When yeah. you were like, no, you need to just actually understand that I'm obsessed mm-hmm. with you. Yes. It was like, I, I thought I was like Rory Gilmore. Mm. You know, I was like, where is Dean? Mm-hmm. You know, why isn't somebody getting on a bus to follow me when mm-hmm. all I'm doing is reading a book? Gorgeous. Like, where's my where's bad boy? Where's Ryan Felipe when you are Reese Withers? Exactly. Where's this hot pursuit yeah. in the face of repeated rejections? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it wasn't showing up. Where mm-hmm. was it? Where was it? And then you never got it. <laughs> and then you never had a boyfriend in high school. Um, I I did I so then I also though did think I need to mm. do this so I guess like I'll date this random guy which <laughs> um, I don't think we ever hung out outside of school I think it mostly um, was it existed in on school grounds. yeah consisted of him like walking me to class which like That's made me uncomfortable cute. I wasn't I would I would instead go for people who I wasn't really that attracted to mm. and be like sure yeah no thanks for sense. this like pencil drawing <laughs> <laughs> you know so you know I feel like I've I feel like we've gotten kind of the large sort of like paint broad strokes if you will of Mm -hmm. where we were at in high school Mm -hmm. we were dealing with a lot we were working we were trying to have status we were pushing away the boys that we liked we were agreeing to date the ones that we didn't Mm -hmm. we have friends Mm -hmm. we have friends Mm -hmm. we are doing well in school absolutely really good grades Mm -hmm. oh my god that's incredible just like death grip on the pencil doing all all my homework (gasps) having you know could be could have been having far more fun but you were just like i'm gonna be i was just like i need all a's Mm -hmm. and to be popular Mm -hmm. and famous Mm -hmm. and go to a good school what I was just psychotic like i don't know i wasn't like present with what my actual wants and needs right what do you think, like, led you to that psychosis? <laughs> Believe me, I'm trying to unpack yeah. it, darling. I mean, well, I like to say that pop culture raised me. Yeah. You know, in the absence of, like, a family life or home life that really um, is something we want to model ourselves after, mm-hmm. what do we turn to? I turn to these teen movies we were talking about yeah. and learned, okay, if I'm popular and hot, yeah, boom, like, my life is made. Yeah, I feel that. But also, I just got everything. I wasn't, I didn't want, I wasn't ready mm. to do what it took to be hot, mm-hmm. wear makeup, mm. look good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want people to look at me. It was just very, like, in my head. I was, I was You stuck. wanted the things, but then you were, like, you were the execution you didn't want to do. No. Because the execution is scary. Because yeah. then, like, what happens when all of it comes true? And what happens when people are, like, I felt so confused by the idea of being sexy. Like, mm-hmm. I remember being in my art class in high school, like, talking about some audition I had to go on where I was supposed to look sexy and I was like I put on a bunch of eyeliner like what else do they want and like my friend from high school being like it's not just eyeliner and me being like what You're like, well what yes, is it, it is. Like, what the fuck is it and what'd she say a smoky eye she never answered that was the thing nobody would give me a goddamn answer they would just go on their merry way it's so crazy because now, like, I genuinely don't think casting directors are allowed to be like, your daughter needs to come in looking <laughs> sexy. Like, I don't think they're I allowed know. to. But on the flip side of that, I do think that teens are very sexy now mm. in a way that we were not. Like, they know how to fully contour their face. It's, yeah, with social, I mean, let's all think. Social media and YouTube and all we didn't this have stuff. The social oh my media. God. Thank God. I'm so grateful every day that I didn't have social media in high school. I mean, social media ruins my life daily. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> if I had it in high school, oh, I don't know what I would have done. Oh, like, we it was did hard have Facebook me- and the MySpace. 
MySpace though was fun because MySpace you got to like be MySpace was really like music oriented in a way and like sceney. There mm-hmm. I am up there. You can see that's a photo of me from high school. Oh um, my god! But <laughs> wow, yeah, my I love my black hair. You can tell I did jet black. Oh my god! So black it was almost blue. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um. Yeah, I took pride in that. I took pride in those in those uh, so were you, crazy bangs. I was thinking you were like theater girl. No, I mean iconically, you said you listened to the Bowen episode before coming here. As you are well aware, we have all been tortured by a drama teacher, right? And my drama teacher just didn't like me, so I never was actually allowed to go into theater. And this is like mm. a recurring theme here on mm-hmm. Senior Superlatives that like. You're at an age where you're so impressionable and, like, you are believing the teachers and, like, the older people in your life because you're kind of like, okay, well, I guess I'm supposed to because, like, you're my teacher and you must know something that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, we're just so fragile. Like, you have one person say to you a few times, like, no, no, no. And then you're like, okay. you dye your hair black. Yeah. But what did you do instead? I, I was a, I was that. art girl. I was like oh, photo wow. girl. I went full tilt, like because I was a really bad student, got very bad grades, was not in theater, <laughs> <laughs> didn't play sports. So I so mm. I was like full on photo girl. Okay, photography, yeah. mm-hmm. like Black creature and white. of the dark room. Yeah, ooh, mm-hmm. very chic. Yeah, I would used to hook up in there sometimes. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, yeah. Load film with me slash <laughs> swapped little spits. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, it was cool. I I felt cool. Like I felt cool in mm-hmm. high school, but I also felt deeply, deeply, deeply tortured mm-hmm. and constantly seeking love, which is why I was constantly like in relationships. Mm-hmm. And I was like boy crazy, but in a way where I like I got a little bit too much of my self-worth and my um identity is not the right word. But I think I put a little bit too much of like like hypersexuality was mm-hmm. definitely something that I was using as like a tool, not because I was like necessarily like in love, but because I thought that it was a currency that made me like more valuable. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yes, I think also so to the point of the um, us believing what adults say to us. Mm. I think my situation got really like kind of crunchy and convoluted because as you alluded to, it still wasn't appropriate for an adult to say to a teenager, like, you need to look fuckable. No! (laughs) But like it was, the implication Mm -hmm. was there and it almost the fact that they couldn't say it like made it worse. Yeah, it's like like damaging. Wear more makeup, like do your hair like this. And I'm like, why and having to put together like to look hot and like what does looking hot mean what is being sexy like are these people supposed to be looking at me and imagining having sex with me Mm. and then being like those are adults and being like shutting down yeah yeah and being 16 and being like, I am deeply flawed. I'm ugly. <laughs> no one. This, this this 42-year-old casting director in Costa Mesa doesn't want to fuck me. More being like, I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with just the, um, I was like, I don't want them to imagine fucking me. Yeah, because so it's I'm fucking gonna, gross. I'm going to dress like, so you can't see my body. Like, don't look at me, but also look at me. Mm. You know? Yeah, I do. Look at me because I'm a star, but not because you want to fuck. Exactly. Look at me because you respect me. Because you respect my acting talent. Yes, because you respect my skill. Which reminds me of the um, college admissions rejected essay I didn't send in. I had like a very emo phase of this like acting. Oh, it's so painful. And like I, I wish I could read you the actual wording because it was exquisite. But it was like it was like. Ugh, how naive I used to be. Like, now I understand, <laughs> like, old <laughs> actresses who aren't hired because of their looks anymore. <laughs> and, like, unintentionally just completely negging people for no reason. I mean, I'm obsessed Not really with that. getting it, yeah. I, my college admissions essay was so bad. I wrote an essay. My essay was about how my parents were workaholics who never paid attention to me, <laughs> and therefore my way of rebelling was being a bad student. 
<laughs> wow. And like every school, I, I applied to 13 schools. I vividly remember <laughs> I got into two. And wow. everyone was like, this essay is bad. <laughs> right. Like you're telling us why you're not hardworking and you're blaming it on your parents. I see there an enterprising there. spirit there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do too. And I see an enterprising spirit with yours as well. Thank you. The The essay I did submit was about not getting cast in Gossip Girl and it's very convoluted. <laughs> and I unpacked it in an essay more recently, but it's very much like – about how it's actually feminist to not be in Gossip Girl, even though right. it like wasn't I love my the take. Choice. It's yeah, but then it becomes your choice. Do you know what I it mean? It didn't. The the argument did not make sense. <laughs> like going back, it's like it doesn't make sense. But also, it's like okay, maybe you were dealing with like your family deaths at the time. Maybe stop yes. focusing on Gossip Girl. I um. I do always like to, after the fact, when I really have wanted something that I haven't mm. gotten, which never happens. Rarely. Ugh, uh, rarely ever. ever you yeah. Know? No. But in the rare. Just that one time. Yeah. In that rare one moment that mm-hmm. you don't get something you really want. <laughs> I do always like do this fucked up thing in my brain where I'm like, well, <laughs> I really want that. And then I'll like <laughs> make it so that it was actually my choice. <laughs> And then mm-hmm. that's how we have to cope with these things that yeah. come, to come into our life. Um, we have, like, really been talking about uh, big – I really like this kind of, like – we've had a very – um esoteric is not really the word that I'm looking for. Conceptual. But like yeah. I'm so, cerebral Do you want to get into the nitty-gritty? Well, I just – I would love to hear just, like, one little tidbit, like, a little high school story where when you think about high school, Sarah, this is a moment in your life. And it could be something as dumb – as like, you know, I remember driving my car and listening to Kelly Clarkson or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I do have some memories in the school parking lot, one of like eating in the car alone later in high school. But mm-hmm. don't worry, we've got other stories too. <laughs> Others of like listening to somebody no one at my school listened to Who? with the windows down feeling absolutely Perfect in life, Regina Spector. Oh come on! Wait, what do you mean? No one. Was no one. To Regina I mean, my, I just didn't hang out with them. I you hung would out have with, loved like, my high school. I think I would have. <laughs> I think I would have. Like I was. I should have been on the East Coast. I was an indoor kid. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, surrounded by. Um, outdoor freaks. Outdoor freaks. Yeah, outdoor surfer freaks. It sounds. And like. it was fun at first, but. Then I couldn't find a way to connect. When, when you wanted to be in your car listening to that song. Yes, yes. And you know the consequence of sounds? What's that? That's like a very long kind of like spoken <laughs> word. It's like I mean, I was listening to Sufjan in my car, like crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so there was that aspect where I was really, you know, myself but alone. Mm-hmm. And then there was where I was of course, there was the freak dancing. Tell me more. Well, I just remember one dance where I danced with the boy I was obsessed with the entire so of my year. So nothing ever happened between you two? No, no, no. Some things did happen. We uh, we hooked up. I mean, how, how graphic do you want me to get? <laughs> I mean, I, whatever you – say what you feel. He basically – like things could have gone further and he kept mm-hmm. trying and I kept – stopping him Mm -hmm. and uh, not understanding that if I stopped it, it literally would never happen again. (laughs) And stopping it being like, I don't want this to be the only time. Mm. And then it being like, well, it is, bitch. Like, it's not happening again. And it's interesting. I look back and I'm like, you should have just done it. You should have just gotten but your you heart fr- broken. You you freaked with him. Well, that was like way – that was years before. I'm telling you, this was a mm. four-year-long one-sided – One-sided. <laughs> but it sounds like he gave it – Like He was he, interested. He was interested. Mm. But then, it, I, then, you know, he was just confused. Yeah. He was like, could you just like be clearer? Because you'd pull back. Yeah. Playing games. Yeah. Um, I got him a shirt. His name was – I got him a shirt from a store in Canada where I was shooting once that said on it really big. And the next year, something, his girlfriend came in wearing it Mm. to our art class. Brutal. Brutal. And I'm like just like drawing. Devastating. Being like. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Literally devastating. Acting unfazed. But I remember freak dancing with him. Which, um, you know, grind. I mean, I wasn't like, 
I don't know. I was just emotionally, developmentally delayed, mm-hmm. but I wasn't like, this feels awesome. I actually felt the performance of it, of mm-hmm. me like grinding on his dick. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember him putting his arm out like this. <laughs> 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 well, I was like bent over in front of him and being like, mm, like grinding like, is <laughs> like actually so embarrassing. embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. When we take a moment to reflect on grinding, it's <laughs> freak dancing. <laughs> when, yeah. When you, oh, this was the question that I was, I was talking about with someone on the pod. Is there a difference between freak dancing and grinding in your mind? No. You think they're the same? Yeah. Like, I think grinding is freak dance. It's like Diet Coke of freak dancing. Like, (laughs) when you're freak dancing, I think you're getting, you're like, you're like getting fucking like sabered on the dance floor. Mm. You know what I mean? (laughs) Uh And I have some memories of grinding. And like, (laughs) when I pause and think about the (laughs) adults like on the perimeter of the dance floor watching me. With that haircut, <laughs> thinking I'm no. so fucking hot, full on, just like, uh, like it makes me want to vomit. Like I feel so upset. Yeah, because grinding is one of the most embarrassing acts of all time. It's I think um, a very important box to check in being alive. Mm-hmm. Everyone at some point needs to grind and mm-hmm. freak. Mm-hmm. But and I you, did it. And you did. But it was. This is this. <laughs> him putting his hand up. I. <laughs> what was that? It felt. It felt um, disrespectful. Also, do you remember <laughs> guys when you would like freak dance with guys and they would just like be like this behind you? <laughs> and you're giving it your fucking all. And all that they can do is really be like. Uh, but in that moment, <laughs> I would have preferred that too. I mean, this is iconic. He was like driving the boat from up here, you know. I was like, and there, there are levels. You guys did levels because you were probably <laughs> I down. Was down low. Yeah, to yeah. get leverage with the that. With yeah, the but gas. see, this is what I'm saying. I was like, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Right. I'm looking for a, a serious man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Not, not this. Not this. Oh my god! Yeah. Is that the sound of a door knock? <gasps> We're in the guidance counselor's office now. Welcome to my office. I'm the school guidance counselor. Oh, I have um, Mott's apple juice. This isn't sponsored by Mott's, but Mott's, you can sponsor us because we do use your apple juice here or Martinelli's. Anyway, Mott's apple juice here if your blood sugar is low. And Thank a pretzel. You. Oh, thanks. A snack no one ever asked for, <laughs> but that there always is. So... In this segment of the show, we like to kind of heal a trauma of the past. Well, there you go. Perfect. And I feel like we've kind of been doing it all all episode. <laughs> just force it into any combo. But the amazing part about when you come into my guidance counselor office mm-hmm. is we will resolve a trauma of high school that you think about constantly. And then once we resolve it, you never think about it again. Mm-hmm. I'm that good. Okay, perfect. So you can use this time to do anything. You can... Um, you can say fuck you to someone that was a bully. You can apologize to someone if you're mean to someone. You can say, I feel bad about this. I feel good about this. You can do whatever. Yield, the time is yours. Yield your time. Or I yield my time to you. Mm-hmm. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. I don't know the law. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> huh. Huh. Um, well, you know, it was making me feel better, you know, you saying that you wished you were a prude. Oh, yeah. So that, because that's really, as as I've been, you know, just constantly bringing up this entire time, mm. the regret of being like, you idiot, mm. like you believed this sick purity culture myth that you needed to save your stupid virginity for someone special. I don't think that's a myth. Oh. I think that's sweet. Well, Okay, so this is the point. Yeah. I see you. So that's I'm like, <laughs> this is what I need because I'm like, you should have just, like, you just should have not been so goddamn precious about it. Maybe just gotten your stupid heart broken, you know? Do you really get upset about that? Absolutely. Still? Well, I just am kind of like, well, what if, like, like you, you look back if? and you're like, what if I didn't play the cat and mouse game with. Yeah, or any, yeah, or any, I mean, mostly him, but yeah, 
any of the you could have three... made plenty of options, gorgeous yeah. options from yeah. ugh, that high school. <laughs> yeah, you kind of had like the pick of the litter. Um, until they were like, she's a weird prude. Got it. Stay away from her. So you have regret that you feel that potentially there's like a um a uh, missing experience that you never got to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or that you never gave yourself. But, but I love hearing, I love being reminded, like, you know, it was actually not good. Um, it, Let like... me tell you the story. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> guidance counselor. It's bad. It's all bad. Mm-hmm. High school relationships are dead ends, except <laughs> unless you are married now, which mazel mm-hmm. tov. Mm-hmm. Um, you go on dates, bad dates, that are not fun. Like, like my my good my good high school boyfriend who we still love to this day, um, Mickey. He took me on a Valentine's date where I got to eat for free at Chipotle, and it always comes back to Chipotle. <laughs> wow. Okay, but here's the thing. Yes, we had experiences. Yes, was I in love? Sure, but like at the same time. Like I became like a like a love sick puppy, mm. where I was like so invested in these you were relationships. Like Cassie from um, yes, Euphoria. Literally, when I watch that, I get sick because mm. I feel her. Wow, like that level. Your um, but your sexual power was so strong. Yeah, but you know, I just wish that I had like listened to my mom and had just like. Not taken these, not gotten into relationships. It's like for what? Your you mom know? said, "Don't get into relationships." Yeah, she was like, "Be free. Like, why are you gonna have boyfriends? Like, mm. you know, enjoy, enjoy a time in your life when you can just be like." I think that what I didn't, what sounds like what you did, maybe too much of, and I didn't do enough of, was like mm-hmm. focusing more on like myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but all high school relationships are bad, and you didn't miss out. Thank you. They're all bad. They're all ultimately toxic and uh, damaging. Mm -hmm. And I think that you saved yourself. Thank you. I love to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're resolved. Now you never need to think about it again because, you know, you didn't miss out on anything. You missed out on very bad sex. Right. And Bad fingering. Did you get fingered in high school? No. Bad fingering. Oh, Oh, my God. The fingering. I can Why is it, how how can you get that so bad? <laughs> how can you get that like, so wrong? Honestly, it's just bad. Because some boys get confused. They don't know if they should use one fingers, two fingers. They don't mm. know they don't know what they're touching. You know right. what I mean? They don't know how the pressure. They don't know Ooh. the pressure. They don't know location. They don't know too rhythm. Too hard. Ouch. Too hard to <laughs> like it's actually <laughs> making me upset. That's interesting because I have a memory of being at my friend's house and her and her boyfriend, this is probably like eighth grade or ninth grade and me like coming into the other room where she and her boyfriend are on her mom's bed Mm -hmm. and I'm just like hey guys like what's up and like yeah getting fingered (gasps) completely getting fingered but and I had no idea just being like so like who's your favorite friend character or some shit (laughs) like they're fully getting fingered yeah one of my favorite lines from any movie (laughs) is in Jennifer's body when Megan Fox walks into the bedroom and she's like it smells like Thai food in here were you guys having sex (laughs) and I'm just like ugh that's so I had no idea um that also reminded me another huge moment that happened I believe in that same room was I was very drunk made out with a guy who is now very out and proudly gay. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A safe, nice experience so in many. my book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I, so sweet. Yeah, I went from I, – I loved, you know, what what is better than falling in love with a gay guy? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing compares <laughs> to falling in love with a gay man. <laughs> it's true. Nothing compares. I fall in love with gay men every single day. I mean, and nothing much. compares. And Why I love my that? husband, but you know, do you know they're gay and you fall in love with them, or no. you fall in love with them and <laughs> yeah, then they're gay, I'm, baby? Yeah. Don't I'm, take it back. I'm joking. <laughs> You're not joking. <laughs> Shut up. I find I just find that like so many of my deepest, most beautiful friendships are with gay men. Mm, I find that if I'm attracted to a guy, he'll he'll be gay. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I find that if I'm attracted to a guy, he'll be completely toxic. <laughs> 
<laughs> and right. Being an awful well, human gay being being, uh, being attracted to gay men is like just the next level of like unavailable. Yeah. Well, know? definitely for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're just not. They're just not. interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? Hmm. Like go to therapy or something. Mm. Just deal with like it's not going to go away. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever you think you're just going to like brush under the rug yeah like you actually should deal with now because otherwise you're going to be dealing with it later and you can actually have fun now Mm. and you don't have to hide it did you drink in high school absolutely okay good and smoked weed yeah Mm -hmm. me saying okay good (laughs) that's a good thing i don't know i I feel like i created a persona for myself where you're like deeply worried about me at this point no i mean i think that like a lot of people, I think that we all feel pressure when we're in this age range, um, whether that's like social pressure, academic pressure, or pressure of things happening in the home. Like, I think there's just so much um, that like builds up on you when you're a teenager. And I don't think that we have the emotional intelligence or mm. the vocabulary to talk and speak on things the way that we can now, which is why I like to me talking about this stuff is so healing. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, yeah, I don't know. We all put like pressure on ourselves, and I think it's just important that we all find like little pockets of joy. So many little pockets of joy. I mean, yeah, I think, I think I want to say freak dance more, but I don't think it's true. No. I don't think it's true. maybe That's maybe not the it's, maybe it's like um maybe it's like it's the career is going to keep popping and you're going to be okay. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah. Just fucking relax. Mm-hmm. Like try a little bit less hard. Yeah. I think is the solution, you know. Go to Get Seal worse Beach. Grades. Go to the beach. Go to Baja Fresh. I was like hanging out in Target reading magazines cover That's to better. cover. I like that. Yeah. That's sweet. I mean, do more of that. Be yourself. Mm. I, I I don't have the answers. I need your answers. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you gave them. <laughs> Thank you. I've got to go, actually. <laughs> it was so great being here. Well, my final question, and then you can leave. Um, did you have a senior superlative? No. Did you have, like, a senior quote or a song or something of that sort? No. No. <laughs> Do you think that, I told you I was a ghost by the end of high school? Do you think that people, like, I guess it's unfair because you were already, like, fully a working professional, like, making your own money and having a legitimate job. So I guess if people were to give you a senior superlative, it would probably have been, like, most likely to be famous. Hmm. Is anybody else from my high school famous from my class? I feel like, I feel like No. Maybe. I don't know. They were like, yeah, you want to be famous, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, Some people we'll were see. supportive, yeah. But I wasn't on, like, cool shows, you know? Yeah. I was on, like, family shows, and that's not fucking cool. I think that's cool. Well, think- now, looking back, it's all, like, wow, like, the journey was worth it, and yeah. that was so beautiful. But, like, in the moment, it was, like... You wanted to be on that Lizzie McGuire. I mean, yeah, exactly. Everyone Same. It wanted all goes to back. be on Lizzie McGuire, which was just aimed at children, yeah, basically. <laughs> and which was like also like what would have been cool? I don't know. Being on like Real World Road Rules, maybe. I don't wow. Know. Would that have been cool? What What would have been cool? What were the cool shows? I you guess unlocked in them. Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl would have, but I don't think. I think that would have ended up actually being far more traumatizing than I for sure was ready for. Yeah. The so. OC. The OC. I also. I feel like I'm. I'm just making everything so hard, just like I did for those high school boys. Um, I didn't watch the OC. Mm. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm from the OC. But like, you know it. You've seen it. You've done it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a senior superlative. And it is most likely to be famous, honey, because you are. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Oh, thanks. It's always good to hear that. Well, I'm so happy that I got to steal you for a, f- a wee hour or so and have you on my show. Thank you for having me. Where can all of my little classmates find you and follow you and watch you because you're doing really great things oh my gosh um 
I truly hate mentioning my social media handle. It's just my name. But um, you can, if you're in LA, darling, um, you can go see my art exhibit, um, Autograph Hound, a retrospective, Mm -hmm. at junior high. And on May 5th, my Audible original, Zaddy, Mm -hmm. is, oh, it's coming out. And you can listen to that. Well, that's so exciting. I love Zaddy. I love the word Zaddy. Me too. I love the... the, um, it's evocative. The, the meaning of zaddy. Me too. What does it mean? Doesn't it mean just like you're a zaddy? Like you're like a like a hot kind of older sugar daddy zaddy. Yeah, baby. Can, like give and That's exactly take. right. I don't know. Um maybe you have a secret or two. Maybe you have or or five. Or five really deep dark ones, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much to everyone for listening to another episode of Senior Superlatives. As always, only give me positive reviews and five stars because I'm <laughs> extremely fragile and I will take it personally if you don't. And um, thank you for listening. I love everyone so much. And as I say every week on the show, stay cool, never change. Until next time, ciao. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>